Nobody has scored more goals in the Premier League than Manchester United this season. So why are we 10 points behind City and not even considered title contenders? We all know it's our defence. So with that in mind, I want to run through what I see as Man United's obvious problems. And the formation and the tactics that I think Solskjaer can use between now and the end of the season to minimise those problems. To get the best out of this United squad and head into the summer in the best shape possible. Because I think things will change after the summer. But what can we do until that point? That's what I'm going to give my opinion on in this video. And before I do begin, make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you are new. I'm going to be doing plenty more of these types of videos over the next few weeks. So if you enjoy analysis videos, make sure you subscribe and also join the Discord server. There is a link in the description. Lots of chat like this over on Discord. But let's take a look at United's problems. Before we even look at the starting 11, really... We need to look at the formation, and this has always been a bit of a debate among United fans. What is United's best formation? If we quick take a quick look at the stats here, now these are from November, but they, they effectively show the pattern that's still repeated. United use 4-2-3-1 under Solskjaer at most, and it's his most successful formation. But in my opinion, this isn't Man United's best formation. The best formation is a 4-3-3, but the reason we have to do a 4-2-3-1 is because we do not have a world-class defensive midfielder who is capable of holding that position on his own. So to supplement the fact that we don't have that in the squad, Solskjaer has reverted to a 4-2-3-1 all too often. And that's why Fred and McTominay have become so important for Solskjaer. Because those two together can do the defensive job that one world-class defensive midfielder could do on his own. And that, for me, is just as important a position for United to strengthen in the summer. I keep repeating it. You know that if you watch this channel enough. But with that in mind... I think our best formation next season will be 4-3-3 with one holding midfielder. But from now to the end of the season, I think it's still going to remain a 4-2-3-1 formation because we don't have that midfielder in mind. So taking a look at that, if that's going to be our formation, this is what I think our 11 should be. And there's question marks in plenty of positions. And the first is in goal. Dean Henderson or David De Gea? Now, for me... That should be Dean Henderson. I want to explain why. It's not just a case of kicking De Gea out because his form's been bad, but his form has been terrible. It's more the fact that if we're going to try and rely on Henderson to be our number one next season, which is a possibility, then we need to give him a run of games to see whether or not he is good enough to be United's number one. Because if you take games like Real Sociedad in isolation, he was good there, but was he massively tested? I think you need to really test Henderson. And the only way to do that for a goalkeeper or a defender is is to give them a run of games. Now, De Gea's form, it's been poor for years now. Not just a couple of weeks or a couple of months, years. De Gea was at his best probably back in 2017, 18 times. Since then, it's been a slow and steady decline. And Solskjaer has to make sure he's not the nice guy here, just by keeping De Gea happy, putting him in the team. You do what is best for United. And for me, that's Henderson, because I don't think any of those defenders really have confidence in De Gea anymore. I certainly don't as a fan. So I imagine, surely it's the same. Maybe it's different. Maybe there's something different going on in the training ground that I don't know about. But they just keep happening. The mistakes keep happening. So something has to change. And for me, Henderson has to get that run of games if we're going to test him and see if he's good enough to be our number one next season. Now, at left back, it's an easy. It's Luke Shaw, man. He's probably the best left back in the league now. He's creating more chances than Andy Robertson has this season. His overlapping runs, his movement, his deliveries, his corners. Luke Shaw's game has gone up a huge, huge amount this season. And I think that's probably because Alex Tellers arrived and sort of lit the fire and just made Shaw up his own game and just got really complacency out of it. And hopefully we see the same thing with wan Saka if we get an experience right back in above him, maybe. But Luke Shaw, there's not even a question mark there. Outstanding player this season, arguably. Man United's player of the year, although Bruno Fernandes might have something to say about that. Now, the biggest question is obviously about our centre-back partnership. And Harry Maguire's going nowhere. He is going nowhere. United have invested a lot of money in Maguire. They've invested a big contract in Maguire. And Solskjaer has made him the centrepiece. He's played in every single game. And his fitness record really is sensational. If he does have flaws in his game. And he has flaws in his game. But we have to be realistic here. And it's not just a case of looking at this team and taking six players out. Spending 400 million. Pulling six players in and saying that will solve it. Because that won't happen. And United will not get rid of Maguire in the summer or for the next couple of years. He will be here. So we have to try and get the most out of him. And that's why Eric Bailly absolutely has to start alongside him. 
Victor Lindelof brings the worst out of Maguire. Maguire brings the worst out of Lindelof. It's so unbalanced. And if that's the buzzword for all of this, and that is basically the buzzword I'm looking for in this formation is the balance. It's why Bailly has to be in. Now, what we need in the summer is to sign a centre-back who has is basically a, a hybrid of Bailly and Maguire. And by that, I mean it's going to be a centre-back who's got the athleticism, the power and the sort of attitude that Bailly has mixed in with the fitness record of Maguire. If you find that defender, it changes the whole shape of our defence. And I saw it against Real Sociedad, who are much, much better than Newcastle. And we were so defensively solid with Henderson, Bay, and Maguire. And I want to see it tried out regularly in the Premier League to see if we can do it there as well. Now, Bay's injury record is probably going to be the reason this doesn't happen. But if we're looking at the best team, that's it for me. That back three... And obviously we've got Wan Bissaka on the right hand side, no questions there. No one really to challenge him. Hopefully get someone in above him. I was really against the idea of Kieran Trippier, but the more I think about what Alex Tellers has done for Luke Shaw, I'm thinking maybe Kieran Trippier could do the same thing for Wan Bissaka. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But that back five for me, I want to see it given a few games because chopping and changing your centre back partnership and your goalkeepers week in, week out, it makes it hard to find the consistency. Typically, your centre-backs and your goalkeeper are the th are three positions that just don't change across the season. If, if, if they're fit, they never change. But they always change at United. And I just want those three to get a run together because I don't have the confidence in De Gea anymore. I don't think Maguire has the confidence in De Gea. I don't think anybody really has the confidence in... They're all... They, none of them have the confidence in each other. And that's why you get there's such horrendous goals that we continue to concede. So I want to see that back five tried. That's my opinion, you might disagree. And let's move up to the midfield now. And there's a lot of questions to be asked about this midfield too. And I think one big issue that we have is as good as Fred and McTominay are together in the sort of the high pressing midfield role that they do, they lack creativity. I think McTominay is certain McTominay is much better as a box-to-box -box midfielder who bursts forward. So maybe this formation wouldn't really work too well, but I've gone for Pogba and McTominay together. I want to explain why. I think we need Pogba because we need someone who really can create and craft from deep. Bruno Fernandes, uh, Saint Bruno Fernandes, if you want to call him that, because he really is, uh, well, his numbers are Saint-like. He's our architect. He's the main man. We, we pass it to him and he's the one who creates. If we have someone like Pogba who can create a little bit from deeper, it, it, it negates that responsibility from Bruno. He can then find himself in better positions further up the pitch and create the sort of service that our wingers need to create the crosses for whoever our striker is. The sort of our, our, our lack of um, unpredictability going forward, I think, starts from deeper. And that's why I would play Pogba there. Now, McTominay alongside him, I certainly wouldn't play Matic there. Uh, I, and you could play Fred, but I think it, it's a little bit too similar too. Pogba, and I think out of all the central midfield options we've got, Scott McTominay is by far and away the best. I, I will have concerns here over the fact that I think he's better as a box-to-box -box midfielder going forward, being more aggressive. So what would he do if he has to hold more often, given that Paul Pogba's playing alongside him here? But And this is what I mean about the lack of balance that we have in, in this midfield. We don't have a pure defensive option. So any, any makeup of midfielders we do... There's always going to be questions about the defensive side of things. And that's always why Solskjaer has reverted to two holding midfielders because he knows he doesn't have the player he can trust enough to do that role on their own. Uh, and Van der Beek, I would probably... You could argue Van der Beek there. Van der Beek instead of Pogba might be a better solution. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. And I do feel sorry for Donny, but unfortunately for him, he's in a very unbalanced midfield setup. And in the positions where he could play, we've got Bruno Fernandes. And we've got Paul Popper. And when they've been playing well this season, they've been playing great. So Donny's not had a chance, really, to come through. I still think that will come, but the focus for United in the summer has to be a defensive midfield signing. And let's see what happens with Donny. I really have no idea what's going to happen. But in terms of this formation, I would say the most balanced option that we've got is Pogba and McTominay. It does mean that McTominay's got to focus a bit more defensively, and maybe that takes away from the good side of his game. But I would rather play him there than Fred, and I would rather play him there than Matic. That's my opinion. And I think Solskjaer will stick to two midfielders for the rest of this season, at least until we sign, hopefully, a top draw defensive midfielder in the summer. But moving further forward than that, we play the 4-2-3-1, and I think the left-hand side is abundantly obvious. It's Marcus Rashford. He is having 
An incredible season on one hand and an incredibly frustrating season on the other hand. Take his goal against Newcastle, little nutmeg, ran through, not, knocked it inside, head down, put his foot through it, great goal. Uh, but Marcus Rashford, when he has time to think about things, when, he, when he's not reacting instinctively, he's, he's not as good. Uh, and that's something that he massively has to improve in his game. But no, no shadow of doubt, Rashford's best position is on that left wing. So no one's going to get that ahead of him, not in my opinion anyway. And obviously it's Bruno Fernandes in the number 10 role. He, what, he's got 15 goals and 10 assists, I think, in the Premier League this season. 40 goals in 39 Premier League appearances for United. The numbers that he's delivering, staggering. And he's, and he's a midfielder, he's not even a striker. Absolutely staggering. And he really is the centrepiece of all of this. And it's not just his quality, it's his attitude and approach that is infectious on the players around him. And there's a big reason why Anthony Martial is not in this 11, which I'll get into a little bit later. But Bruno Fernandes is, is going to be that man. He plays the number 10, but he's, he's relentless. He's, he's, he never gets tired. So he'll, he'll drop deeper and help in midfield. He'll, he'll help defensively and he'll bring it forward. It, he embodies everything positive about the change that we've seen in this United team under Solskjaer in the last 12 months. And he's the, the, the architect of it on the pitch. He's the one leading by example. And he continues to do so week in, week out. So without doubt, he's the main centrepiece of this team. Now on right wing... I've gone for Mason Greenwood, and for me, it's still the problem position. Actually, I think you'd probably say the striker is just as much of a problem position now as the right wing is. But the right wing's certainly been a problem for a long time, and it's why teams are so happy sitting in a defensive low block against us, because they know they can double up on the left of us, because they know we're not going to switch it fastly over to the right-hand side and stretch their defence. That's, that's a big way of getting past a low block, because you'll always have space on the wings if you can keep your width. Now, Dan James is good form. I'm sure, he'll, I'm sure he'll be playing in this team plenty, but if I'm looking at the best 11 for the rest of the season, I would put Mason Greenwood in ahead of him. Certainly a far more rounded, more cultured game, better finisher, better player. Much, much better player. So Mason Greenwood there, absolutely starting at right wing. And up front, there's no Anthony Martial. And I really, it's really weird, man. If you imagine how good Martial was last season, I think 23 goals, finished one ahead of Rashford. Sensational progress last last season from Martial in terms of scoring those like ugly goals runs to the front box little dinks little headers it, he looked like a more complete striker fallen off a cliff disappeared no idea who he is this season by comparison and Martial I don't think will ever properly suit a pressing system and that's why Edison Cavani for me has to be United's number one choice striker when fit his movement just he plays like a striker should play. Uh, and if you look at all the other players that United have, you've got Martial, you've got Greenwood, and you've got Rashford. All three, I would probably argue, are more suited on the wing. I want to see Greenwood playing more centrally, though. And that's a big reason why... I, hopefully, Diallo will come in and play more minutes on the right wing this season. He'll, he'll maybe get, he'll get a, a goal here or there, build some confidence, a bit like Dan James is doing, and Solskjaer will give him a chance. And hopefully, when he gets that chance... He doesn't let go of it and he makes the most of it. And if he can do that, maybe we'll see Diallo on the right wing and maybe we'll see Greenwood and Cavani switching as our main striker. But Martial, his form has been so poor this season, it, it, you can't ignore it anymore. And when Cavani is fit, I think he'll come straight back into this starting eleven, And he absolutely should. Because looking at this eleven there, it negates a lot of our problems. If you're looking up front, it takes away the lack of the press that comes from, from players like Martial... And you've got someone like Cavani who operates as a proper number nine and stays in the box. There's no point of a, a, a striker not being in the box. If you're going to have someone like Shaw overlapping, getting crosses in, or you're going to have James who's actually going to burst past a player, or Green, anybody who's going to get a cross in, you need a striker in the box. Martial doesn't operate like that. Martial prefers to wait towards the edge of the box rather than being the person on the edge of the six-yard box. And that's what Cavani does extremely well. Now, I still have concerns about midfield. No matter what setup I would choose, whether that's Pogba and McTominay, or McTominay and Fred, or Matic and Fred, and Van der Beek and... But any setup you have out of two players, there's question marks. And it's why United desperately need a defensive midfielder. I keep repeating that, but it's true. We need it just as much as we need a centre-back. And going back towards our centre-backs, it's Maguire and Bay. It's obviously Maguire and Bay. It, do it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see it's Maguire and Bay that is our best two. It's probably by his injury record and his fitness that's maybe holding him back a little bit. And I hope he doesn't get another injury this season, but you can't rule it out. 
and Henderson. Henderson has to go in above De Gea for me, certainly at the moment. Maybe not for the course of the whole rest of the season. Maybe Henderson will have a couple of bad games, De Gea will come in, but I don't think we're planning for De Gea in the future of our club anymore. I think De Gea could be sold this summer if the right bid is made. And in that case, we have to test Henderson out properly. And that means giving him a run of games in the Premier League, not just in the Europa League or the FA Cup. The Premier League is where we need to see Dean. That's my opinion and that's my formation and, and sort of explaining the problems that we've got, in my opinion, and, and what I think we can do to negate those problems between now and the rest of the season. Now, I think things will change in the summer if we make the right signings, a DM and a proper centre-back, and we switch to a real proper 4-3-3 with one holding midfielder, then you can get more out of Pogba. Uh, well, you, you can't really get more out of Bruno, but you keep him in the same sort of position. But you certainly have a more balanced midfield setup. At the moment, we can't find that balance with the squad that we have. Uh, you might disagree with Pogba and McTominay. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But that's my opinion on, on United's problems and solutions that I can see inside this 11. You might disagree. You can let me know in the comments below. And make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. If you enjoyed this video, you can tweet me at United People's TV. If you want to ask questions, you can come join me on Discord for live voice chats. Plenty going on. But make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. Until next time, take it easy.